everybody, my name is Luke Mar and this is Hot Love Mode and today on Hot Love Mode we are coming to you with a part two to our can fashion roast and review. Listen, can's a long time, you know, it takes time to get into everything, you know. So we're doing part two just because there were a lot of looks, had to be discussed. So I didn't want to miss out on anything, but I also didn't want to make the first video like 75 hours long. So without further ado, let's just get into it. First up, we have Alton Mason and he is wearing Preciat, which honestly, this is like a double-breasted jumpsuit suit and I'm obsessed with it. The other great thing about Alton Mason is like, Alton Mason is a fashion girl, you know what I mean? Like, I usually leave that for the girls, but Alton Mason's a fashion girl, gets it. He just, he delivers in all ways. So here we have a navy blue suit and the great thing about it is that waist is Fitted. It almost has like a very 1930s, 1940s sort of cut to it because the shoulders and sort of the bust line and up is very, very broad. And then as we get to the, the waist, it really fits right in, which is again, as I said, like very 1930s, 1940s menswear suiting inspired in my opinion. But what they've done is they almost folded over the panel of that double breast and created what looks to be almost like a suit jacket, but it's not. It's all connected to these pants. So in reality, it's, it's a full jumpsuit and it's really cool. Like it's very cool. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. It fits wonderfully. The pants may be a little bit baggy, but also like it's a jumpsuit. So there has to be some sort of suit jump -ness going on there. The shoes, I'm unsure of what they are. They're some sort of snake skin or faux snake skin in a blue and a pink, which I feel like naturally doesn't occur in snakes. But at the same time, I'm intrigued by it nonetheless. And then it's a white shirt, a blue sort of tie. And again, like that white shirt, it's a high little collar. It's just, it's a cool look. Like this is the definition of cool menswear. Shout out to Preciat, shout out to Alt Mason because this is a great way to get can started in my opinion. Next up we have Anne Hathaway and she's wearing this custom dress. Now the top is actually blue PVC leather and we can see that there's a lot of stitches going on in the bust sort of area and around sort of way. And then there's just a lot of seamage going on through and then it connects like at the under bust to pretty much a sort of 19th 60s style cut mini dress with quite a little bit of embroidery going on throughout it, but it's black and then the embroidery kind of like reflects a little bluish in the light. So they kind of align a little bit. The shoes, very sort of Studio 54 disco with the bows and silver and strappy, how it connects to the gold of the bag, I'm not really understanding, but the bag is a Gucci Blondie bag, which I believe is a new line of bags that Gucci has laid out and it's very 1970s inspired. So I will say, I wish that we had gone for like a gold in terms of like jewelry and all that sort of stuff, because then it would have played off of the gold of the bag. Because I feel like we're doing gold and silver and silver and blue and black and silver. Yeah, I wish we had done like a little bit more gold with the jewels. But overall, I think it's an intriguing look for Anne Hathaway. It's definitely not like the super duper fashion fashion moment that we had like at Armani, but I do think it's intriguing enough. And I think it also shows a sort of little diverse range of Anne Hathaway's fashion abilities. Do I love it? No. But do we think it's like intriguing? Sure. There's another Anne Hathaway look we have to discuss, which is this Valentino Fall 2022 PP pink jumpsuit. Honestly, it's like one of my more favorite looks from this whole collection. Because of the neckline, I think it's really, really intriguing. It's off the shoulder, but it also sort of like curls up right at like the, the breast bone, chest bone area. Honestly, I think that it fits Anne really, really well, at least in this photo. I think it is a little bit wider in terms of fit, but it's also a jumpsuit, so that, that helped. The large shoes, we love a dedication to a platform. Square toe I think is really intriguing too. I wish we had maybe just put the pant leg over the shoe, but maybe we're doing it just so that everybody knows that we wore the shoe. I'm not sure. Seems intriguing, especially considering it's like not on the carpet, it's like a staged photo, so I don't know. But honestly, besides the sleeves, I think it fits phenomenally. I think it's a really intriguing sort of silhouette. And I love the fact that we're getting this nice, like intriguing off the shoulder in a beautiful color. It doesn't seem as like violently pink on Anne here too, which is rather nice to see. It just seems like a nice sort of bubblegum pink rather than like neon in your face. I love it. And that's why I like can't really do too, too wrong, can she? Next up, we have Austin Butler wearing Celine. Now, as we know, it's Celine. So it's going to be very, very simple. It's a crisp suit. It's pretty much your, your go-to double-breasted black suit has a little silk stripe running down the side of the pan and then a black sort of boot which listen if there's one thing I'm gonna love about a Celine it's gonna be the fact that there's a black boot shout out Eddie it's honestly just your you know run-of-the-mill cut suit 
listen, of course, would I like an Alton Mason style jumpsuit on Austin Butler? Yeah, but also leading man Elvis Presley-ish, I understand. I do hope that as the sort of Elvis Presley tour moves on and we're doing the premieres and stuff like that, that Austin actually like gets into doing Elvis references in like, traditional sort of suiting styles if that's what he likes, but adding those little references, you know what I mean? I'm not saying he has to wear like a full white jumpsuit a la Alton Mason, although if Alton Mason is referencing Elvis Presley via that jumpsuit, layered, layered nuances, and Austin Butler should be taking notes. It'd be intriguing to see with a suit like this, a little sailor flap or something in the back that references, you know, the king's, the flap, with the, with the jumps. It just, there should be like Elvis references going on here. I think it's just right for the picking. Elvis is very much a menswear sort of dude in that, in that respect. They were intriguing looks. So I hope that Austin does that in the future. As for Can, I get it. It's appropriate. It makes sense. It fits well. Next up, we have Bella Hadid, and she is wearing a Chanel vintage ready to wear piece again. None other than Shrimpton Couture. S H R I M P T O N Couture. C O U. T-U-R-E. Honestly, Cherry Balk is an icon and this Bella Hadid look, from what I could tell, the seller was like, oh, it's from the 1990s. We're unsure. And Cherry, of course, clocked it, no problem, because she's just an icon like that. So it is, I believe, from fall 1986. I thought it was from the 1990s, but 1986, I believe, Cherry, always and forever. But it's not haute couture. It's a ready-to-wear piece because it has a Chanel boutique label. You know, they don't sell the haute couture in the boutique. Essentially, it is a black velvet bodice that falls into a white gathered and striped skirt. There are striped, but they're vertically striped sleeves that are off the shoulder and they're poofed and sort of big and wrinkled and they come down and almost create a gigot sleeve effect, but it's as if they're off the shoulder gigot sleeves, which again, I think is interesting. And then how you know, it, Chanel is pretty much the gigantic white camellia, which was Coco Chanel's sort of signature flower place right in the center of that black bodice. And I think a great thing about Bella is that little hair accessory, little bow in the back is just like perfect milkmaid realness. So I think it's a great dress. I feel like a lot of people are like, I don't like it, it doesn't really look good, blah, blah, blah. And it's fine, I get it, to each their own. My thing about it is I think it's that perfect sort of Karl Lagerfeld sticky camp that we see in older, older, older collections. This collection would have been four years into his career at Chanel. So it wouldn't have been that long, but it is a great sort of example of being able to see how early on he was able to like mix all of these strange sort of references together and make something that is most definitely intriguing. Again, it's like trumped up milkmaid. It's a little bit tartified, which we love to see. Also, I feel like I don't get to call things tarty enough, so I'm gonna work on that. Not tarty as in late, tarty as in like, she's a tart or he's a tart. I'm a tart. But the thing that I also love about it is I don't know if this is exactly a reference to Breton stripes, although I feel like it could possibly be, but Coco Chanel herself loved the Breton stripe. It was something that she wore quite often. She hung a lot out in the French Riviera when she was young and also when she was old. That's what I probably think the stripes are technically a reference to is sailor stripes and all those sorts of things. And I think it's smart that Carl did them in a vertical sort of style on the sleeve as well. But the skirt I think really is perfect. It just has that sort of old world feeling. It feels very summery and very festive and beautiful. And I, and I think the South of France is a perfect place to wear a look like this. Personally, I think it's a great dress. It fits her wonderfully. Again, Belle Hadid and Law are a duo I don't think anybody else can touch with a 49 and a half foot pole. And I think for everybody else, they should be quaking in their boots. Next up, we have Bella Hadid again, and here she is wearing vintage again. Law Roach vintage, it all makes sense. Like, we love to see it. This is a vintage Gucci fall 1996 look. It is a Tom Ford designed gown, which in reality, if you look at Tom Ford Gucci collections, the majority of them, at least early on, were inspired by the 1970s. So there is a lot of referencing to like Halston, Studio 54, Elsa Peretti. And I feel like this is a perfect example of that. This dress is a reference to Halston and Elsa Peretti. There is a Halston and Elsa Peretti sort of ensemble Bleu that was found in the About Time exhibition. And it's a dress from autumn winter 1973. And then there is a Elsa Pretty belt from 1971 that definitely this collection is most definitely a reference to. The sort of clinginess, the use of jewelry, it just 
it works. It makes sense. It's very Halston. It's very Elsa. So here, Bella's version is a white fitted gown. And honestly, I think the fit of it is really, really nice. Evidently, it was taken in because we don't have as much clavicle showing. And I will say, I think out of everything about this dress that I think is rather perfect, I wish that we had left that neckline. I think that neckline is superb and it's really subtle and it's really really gorgeous but the original neckline is so much better than this tighter one it doesn't have the same appeal i will say with that neckline covering a lot more i understand that in order to probably take it in on bella and to make it fit a little bit better that's what we had to do listen cause and effect and unfortunately that's my upsetment with the effect but i think that that cutout is gorgeous and i feel like bella has off-white references to this tom ford dress in the past or she would have i don't know maybe modeled on the runway but it, like th this doesn't seem like a, a concept that's foreign to bella because the off-white sort of experience but i think it's a nice sort of play on jewelry and sort of do jewelry in a different sort of manner but making it a part of the dress part of the ensemble and not just something that goes on after my overall thing is i think it looks nice on her and i love that we're pulling a piece out of reference history but i think that just maybe it's this photo in particular but it feels like the whole has been altered. It feels like it's much more ovular rather than sort of circular like the original. And that also is a little bit strange because it doesn't allow the jewelry, that gold sort of piece on that hip to really, I think personally, have its play in the way that it kind of needs to. It feels like it's just a little section and it's it's not giving as much room as there should be. And again, the neckline is really like my upsetment. I don't think Bella looks bad. I just think when you put it next to the original, the original smacks very hard. Sorry. Next up we have Charlie XCX and she is wearing Jean-Paul Gaultier Haute Couture. Now this is from the Spring 2022 collection, which was designed by Glenn Martins, who honestly like we stand. And also I feel like I have not seen enough of that collection out and about, so I'm happy that Charlie is wearing it. Now what's going on here is this look is essentially a little sheer top with a lace sort of panel on the bust that covers the actual bust, but it's layered over top of a corset that in reality I think is actually a breastless corset. So it sort of comes up here to the chest bone and then sort of dips and exposes the breast technically and then sort of flares out. And then we have a little low-waisted skirt paired with it. So with this low-waist skirt, you know, it's kind of big, it's kind of large. It obviously has like a beautiful long train that fans out. To me, it just feels like a sort of nice little Gautier style. There's lace, there's elements of lingerie as outerwear, and there's a little bit of drama in the train. It's one of the much more subtle looks of the entire Jean-Paul Gaultier by Glenn Martin's collection. But regardless, I do think it's intriguing to see. I don't think it's like too blah in your face annoying, but I don't think it's so overwhelming avant-garde over the top that it feels like it's out of place there either. I think it's kind of just like a perfect little match. And also, I like the fact that Charlie XCX is in Jean-Paul Gaultier haute couture. Seems appropriate. Next up we have Coco Rocha and she is wearing Iris Van Herpen. Now this is to the Amphar Gala and it's Iris Van Herpen Spring 2021 and Coco is giving it to the girls. Essentially it's a halter style cocktail dress. It has these beautiful sort of yellow fanned out panels that are white and then on the inside they're sort of black and they have this gorgeous sort of yellow trim to them as well. And then what happens is we can see that where the actual halter cocktail dress is on the sides, juts out this like beautiful, it's not pleated, but it looks like it's almost like ribbed panels that create that very Iris Van Herpen organism-ish sort of style. But I love the way that it sort of goes from this really, really dark sort of muddy black that then sort of muddies into yellow and then into white. It's stunning, it's intriguing, it's gorgeous. It's a look that I think out of all of the looks from this collection, you wouldn't think of immediately, but Coco Rocha brings it back and also like, when the context is not the Met Gala with a very specific theme, I think there's very rarely a time where an Iris Van Herpen is inappropriate. This seems very appropriate. I think the shoes also work. They're not really taking advantage. They're not trying to take attention away. They're just letting Coco do the damn thing. So, love this. Very happy. As per usual, thank you Coco Rocha for being a human being. Next up we have Depika Padukone and she is wearing Louis Vuitton. Now this is a custom look, but it's based on the Resort 2023 collection. Essentially it's made up of this large shoulder pad sleeve situation. And then from the shoulder pads like juts out this beautiful sort of metallic-y sparkly fringe. that sort of almost looks like, I think it looks like gorilla arms. You know what I mean? Like 
but I love it. I think it's so weird and strange and I'm obsessed. It's very Nicolas Chasquier, but like that true architectural strangeness that we know and that we love. And it's not the crazy kooky all over the place. I don't know what's happening. Nicolas Chasquier, it's like concentrated derangedness. And we love to see that. It is very reminiscent of like Balenciaga from when he was doing Balenciaga and the girls couldn't touch it. What's great about this look is while it's on the runway, it's a sort of crop top and then paired with a gold pant. And that's fine there. But here, what's been done is honestly, we've just taken this, I presume a jacquard of some sort you know, from the sleeves and then just turned that into a fitted gown. And again, I think it does a great job of continuity. It allows the look to sort of, you know, feel cohesive, but it's not trying to take away attention from the fact that there are gigantic gorilla arm sleeves with shoulder pads on top. You know what I mean? And again, I think to be Kone, I'm happy that she like went for it. You know what I mean? Like she went for it. She did it. She said, I'm just gonna do this. We're gonna stand out. We're, we're gonna be crazy. And she let it be. And I think it worked brilliantly because it's like an architectural feat. It's like futuristic. It's like at the same time glamorous and intriguing. It's a fashion sort of feat. It's architectural. Like there's just so much about it that is good and strange and weird and lovely and this is what i mean if you're gonna do it just do it just go for it just go for it especially with louis vuitton custom like take an element from that runway show and then just give it the custom spin and be crazy because it's louis vuitton just be crazy next up we have Gemma chan and she is wearing louis vuitton now this is a custom look it's a strapless gown and it almost looks like stone sidewalk it has little gray light gray panels that are in my opinion stone like at least like the shapes are and then it's full of a silver embroidery that sort of almost looks like you know the floor is lava but it's actually liquid mercury that's really hot and that's sort of the whole dress which in my opinion is a little bit unfortunate because i feel like for a custom look it should be a little bit more interesting and intriguing not to be like oh look at jennifer connelly but like to look at jennifer connelly like holy shit that's a custom dress this yeah you know what I mean? Like the waist, we can see that obviously the embroidery creates a waist where the two pieces were put together. We can see all the boning sort of running throughout, but it's not like appealing. That's the problem. It's not like an appealing looking bodice situation. And then the embroidery just, it doesn't really do all of that much. I'm sure that it's a reference to some sort of architectural, sculptural, interior design, sort of something, something, but I don't think it translates super duper well on a dress. And I feel like Gemma is also very much so a fashion girl, so I would have loved for something a little bit more simple and beautifully executed rather than like trying to do something that maybe is a little bit more like fashion-y and then it, it falls flat here because I just don't think this motif is, should fall flat, but it, it does here. And that's the strange issue with it. It's just an uninteresting dress, but the intention was, in my opinion, I think to be interesting. And then because it's uninteresting, it's so meh, 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 meh. It's not, not the vibe we want for Gemma or for Louis Vuitton custom. Next up we have Julianne Moore in what I believe is custom Bottega Veneta, which honestly, the Julianne Moore ex Bottega is kind of my new favorite thing in the entire world. I, I love it, I think it makes sense. Listen, I know that we used to see Julianne in a lot of Armani Privé, unless I'm like, no offense to anybody, but like I obviously hope that that continues because I like seeing Julianne in Armani Privé. But I do actually think that the Bottega thing makes sense to her. I feel like Bottega, like a Laura Piana, like an Armani, is a brand that's very, very subtle. It's very, very simple, but at the same time, good quality. And so I like to see that. So this is a custom look, but it's based on, I believe, fall 2022. Started on the runway. It was a little bit more of a fitted jumpsuit rather than a dress like Julianne's is. But I think that honestly, like it's an intriguing element. So we're keeping in the in the shoulder straps, textured element of leather, which is something that was a house coat of Bottega. But the fact that it's these tassels, again, sort of honestly does a nice job of differentiating that. Like I'd love to see big long braids of these leather tassels i feel like that would be really really cool but for right now the leather tassels are intriguing the fit of the leather dress it's not perfect obviously but again it's like a leather leather is not going to fit that phenomenally unless it's sort of molded a la like a, a bust or something like that and even then that's gonna have to be like super hard shelled and it's gonna have to be molded on top of something else i don't expect a perfect fit with a leather dress because it's just not a realistic expectation but again i think full Bottega, where it's a brand where leather is the sort of mainstay working on getting leather pieces on the red carpet that fit phenomenally that nobody else can say boo to a goose about it 
It's kind of what has to happen, but I'm also willing to give Matthew Blasey and the Bottega red carpet team time, work on that. I mean, it, red carpets are not really like a Bottega staple, so as time is going on, I think it's appropriate to sort of give a little bit of a lead time for them to figure that out. And yeah, I think it's gonna be intriguing to see Julianne sort of, you know, move through the Bottega rank. I wish the shoes also maybe were a little bit better, a little bit more intriguing Bottega styles, because again, and also like a bag. I don't know, maybe she didn't want to wear a bag, maybe she wanted to wear those shoes, but I think with the Bottega, the accessories are so incredibly important, so that's more of like a Julianne stylist thing. We gotta work those accessories in more. It's important, it's imperative, some may even say, for the Bottega experience. But I'm intrigued, it's not perfect, but I'm willing to give lead time for the leather custom looks to get better on the red carpet. Next up we have Kaya Gerber and she is wearing a custom Celine dress. It is a halter style dress, little around the neck loop. Personally, it's not my favorite way to do a halter with that little spaghetti strap situation, but it's an intriguing dress. And again, it's Celine. It's incredibly simple, but it does fit well. So I think that's the thing. Like it fits nicely. Do I wish it was more intriguing? Sure, but it fits nicely. And it's also Celine, so it's gonna be rather simple in that regard. So I want maybe a little bit more drama from Kaya, just a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, do the Bella. Take the page out of that book and slap it on. I just think it would be a little bit more impactful, a little bit more intriguing, a little bit more, oh my God. So that's my thing. I don't think it's a bad dress, but I also don't think it's a wow, memorable dress either. The fit is nice, but it doesn't really scream anything. It screams nothing. It's like a forgettable whisper. Next up we have Katherine Langford. She's wearing Valentino. Now again, the PP Pink collection is out here. What we've done here, it's almost like it's a caftan sort of coat. There's a collar, it's a fitted sort of waist, but we have a little bit of a plunging neckline with the pink bra exposed, big, big, big sleeves, and then a large skirt with a terrain that sort of falls out. It's not the worst Valentino bright pink look that I've seen, honestly. It really isn't. It's much more Madame, I would say. You know, I think it definitely skews Catherine older. It doesn't look horrible on her, but it definitely feels more like an age, not even age appropriate, but it feels like something somebody in their 50s, 60s might choose. I don't think it's terrible to go that way, but I also don't think it's like the most exciting look in the entire world. And again, I don't hate it. I just think it's an intriguing choice. And I wonder why we went for this sort of direction in terms of the looks. There are a lot of those Valentina looks that we could have chose from. So I, I'm, I'm intrigued by this one particularly. But again, simple. It's not really super duper exciting, not really super duper memorable. It's not horrible either though. It's just, it's there. And that's okay. Next up we have Kristen Stewart. She is wearing Chanel. This is from Resort 2023, which just came out. It's very F1 formula, Monaco experience and again listen i have not watched all of that netflix i watched an episode of the netflix show about the f1 shout out daniel ricardo but even then i'm like oh okay gotta look, i gotta i gotta keep watching the main cars but i have to say honestly i think the fit of this on kristen is pretty decent especially for a tweed i like the fact that we did the plunging sort of neckline we only buttoned it at the bottom and exposed the chest and sort of part of the stomach i think it looks nice it's very classic chanel it's a collarless tweed suit. It has a grid pattern. The red tweed is there. There's the braiding sort of detailing that's going along the lines of the jacket. We have the Chanel CC in black and white. It's fine. Do I kind of wish that she had worn the hat with it? Yeah, I do actually, weirdly enough. That would be a very case to look to have worn. I think the pants fit pretty decently. The shoe choice, I don't really get. I feel like we wore it so that it didn't clump at the bottom like it does on the runway. And I think that's great and I think that's wonderful, but it's a little bit, we're going out to the club, but it's midday at can. Considering the Chanel looks that they put Kristen Stewart in, this one I will take in every color, every day of the week, rather than the usual shit and shinola we get. So give me this fake F1 loving Kristen Stewart. I will take it all the time. Next up we have Kylie Minogue. She is wearing Versace. It is a look from I believe fall 2022. And if it's not a look from the runway specifically, it's a custom version. What we have is a sheer bodice and hip 
gown that has a black sequin bra and a black sequin skirt that, you know, runs along it. And then we can see the actual boning that has been placed on that sheer fabric or underneath that sheer fabric. And that's sort of what we have going on here. I don't hate it. I think it's meant to be very simplistic in a way. It's meant to really sort of be about the sheerness, about the boning, and about the fact that Kylie Minogue has body on display and that's very Versace. It's not super duper memorable. Oh my God, I'm obsessed, I'm gonna die. I, you know, it would have been lovely to see a suit or something like that, but for what it is, I don't hate it. I don't, it's fine. Maybe had we like sequin the, the boning or something like that, we could have, you know, set it apart a little bit, but for what it is, She's nice. Next up we have Jake Gyllenhaal and Jean Cadieu. And I don't know who Jake is wearing, but I know that Jean Cadieu is wearing Loewe Babe. It's fall 2022. We're obsessed. So let's talk about Jake really, really quickly first. It's a double-breasted suit. It's black. It has a little yellow button-down shirt underneath. Black pants. They fit decently. The shoes are kind of blah. As per usual, Jake Gyllenhaal relying on being hot. Uninteresting. Take a page from Maggie's book. Very sad. Very depressing. You can be simple and subtle and also very fashionable. Your sister does it very, very well. As for Jean Cadieu, she's obviously wearing Loewe Fall 2022. It is the lips, what kind of lips, that's up to you, dress that is in a bright sort of bubblegum pink. Now the bust is made up of a, what I believe leather or patent leather plate, and then a fitted sort of little pink asymmetrical skirt with a large sort of silver bow tie strappy sandal and a bracelet pouch. So the bag is actually a bracelet. It looks like it's a sort of pleated fabric and then it's held together by two sort of sundial-y panels and then it becomes a bracelet, which I think is kind of smart. Very Jonathan Anderson-y. Overall, honestly, I think the look is great. I think it's super funny. I think it's super nice to see it on a red carpet. I feel like for Cannes, it's a little bit avant-garde, but also it's Loewe, so you're always going to see something avant-garde from Loewe. It's just not simple. But yeah, I just love to see it. I think it's funny. I think it's charming. I think it's endearing. I think the shoes and the bag, of course, are like definitely different than the vibe of the dress. But I think with Loewe, more is more. And that's important. So yeah, just happy to see her. I feel like Jake should start wearing Loewe menswear. Just putting it out there. Just a thought. Next up, we have Lakeith Stanfield and he is wearing Saint Laurent. Now this is, again, one of the great Lakeith moments. He's essentially wearing a velvet bathrobe with a shirt and a pant underneath. It's a great thing about Lakeith is he just always delivers. He never lets it be boring. And again, listen, people, Lakeith can wear a velvet bathrobe over a shirt and a wide-legged pant. It can. You all can wear a little crop jacket or a shawl, okay? It's not that hard. I'm not exactly sure of what the reference is. I, I presume it's some sort of reference to maybe smoking suits or coats or jackets. Maybe it's a reference to things like Marrakesh and Morocco where Yves Saint Laurent had a house. Maybe it's a reference to Algeria and Oran where Yves Saint Laurent grew up. I'm not super duper sure, but I just like seeing the style out and about. I think it's intriguing. I think it's different. I think it's something that we don't often see from menswear. And it's not just a blazer, which is nice to see as well. I think the adding of the little braided rope belt is really, really nice, really, really fun, really, really simple. The little silver piece on the, the lapel is sweet. You know, again, you don't really see brooches all that often. But the shoes I wish maybe were a little bit different. They're a little bit slippery for me. Not like slippery, but the patent leather, just, it just looks like it's a slipper. But maybe that's what we're trying to go for because it's maybe like, maybe a reference to a house coat or something like that. Something that men of the past would wear indoors, et cetera, et cetera. But either way, Lakeith always does something intriguing, always something interesting. It's never like in your face annoying. It's always, wow, I'd like to be like him when I grow up. So shout out Lakeith, shout out Saint Laurent. We love to see it. Next up, we have Lena Mafouf, and she is wearing Stephanie Roland. Honestly, I'm intrigued by it. It's a sheer gown where that black sort of circle creates a shape. There's a little crystal neckline and a crystal waistband, and then there is a white skirt that's fitted. It falls down. It sort of showcases the sides of the hips, and then we have a large sort of big poofy train in silk that sort of falls out from behind it. I think there's a little bit too much going on here. That's my issue. I like Lena. I think she's really, really great. I think we have too much happening. Crystal neckline, the crystal waistband. The crystal waistband is a no-no. To the black circle and then the skirt and then the poof. There's a lot of components that are fighting each other here. And I think that's the problem with the dress overall is 
I don't think it knows what it wants to be. The crystal says I want to be super pretty, pretty princess. The black panel over the sheer says I want to be architectural, intriguing, I want to be deconstructed. The skirt I think says the same thing but I want to be a little bit sexier but then the train at the back of the skirt says I want to be pretty, pretty princess but I want to be cool and chic and elegant and can't. So I just think there's too many things happening and had we sort of picked apart those little things to just let one element be the shining thing and everything else sort of, you know, plays background really, really beautifully and crisply, it would work. I also don't even think the sheerness of it is that bad. Normally I feel like the sheer is just a little bit tough. I think it actually works very, very well. It's really not super obvious unless you're looking for it. Overall, I think it's just the construction of aesthetics within the dress that makes it overwhelming and not in like a great way. It's not horrible but it's not great. Next up, we have Louis Pullman and he's wearing Saint Laurent. And again, I just feel like Saint Laurent, the men's wear is just, it's top tier. Like it really is. It's simple, but it's always just like that one little detail that makes you excited for life. So it's a black suit, usual sort of go-to black suit, a white button down shirt. And then we have a little braided rope bow tie and it's hot. It's so cool. I love it. I'm like inspired. I want to do that myself. That's really it, you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a great look and there's that one little subtle difference that sets it apart. As soon as I saw that bow tie, I said, whew, okay. Lewis Pullman, I really don't know who you are. It's, it's me, it's not you, but now I need to know who you are because that is hot. I'm obsessed. It's those subtle little risks that work and pay off oftentimes that you're just like, damn. And you don't even have to go super crazy outside of the box. You're changing a tie. It's really not that hard. So I think it's a great look. I really do genuinely like the, the boots. We love to see it. The pants, we like to see it. The jacket, we like to see it. The shirt, we like to see it. The bow tie, we love it. Very much so. Next up we have Liza Koshi in a George's Hobika gown. It's a silver embroidered gown that from the bust down, it sort of creates like a triangle obtuse panel situation. And then the skirt sort of forms a little triangle of its own. And we have a sort of drop crystal, a little floral sort of style crystals and paillettes over sheerish skirt. I think it's intriguing. It's not unmemorable. I think it fits her really, really well. I think it's very flattering. I think it's very chic and elegant. It's just, again, not super duper memorable. And that's my problem. It's not super like, oh my God, I'm gonna remember this for years to come. It's kind of, it's there and it's nice and I appreciate that it's there. But will I sit there and be like, oh my God, wow, Liza Koshi 2022 can. Oh, remember? No, not at all. Not for a second. As soon as I stop talking about it, it will never enter my mind ever again. So that's sad. Next up, we have main skin and they are wearing Gucci. Now it's a full custom ensemble. So we're just going to start with the floral suit with the feather sleeves. Love. I think it has very Harry Styles, Alessandra Michele, like early print feels and vibes. But I like the fact that we have the feather sleeve at the end that makes it intriguing and fun and different and cool. Next up, we just have a very sequined suit. Nothing too crazy except for the fact that it's sequins, but it's Gucci. So like sequins are not too, too crazy. It's not weird or strange and deranged. It's just nice flourish suit in a coppery sequin. Then next up we have her, who she is, I uh, the name I don't know, it escapes me and I apologize, but I just love this weird pleated top. It's very strange. But at the same time, if you look at Gucci collections, you'll find gowns like this with these beautiful sort of vertical pleats that come down in these sort of like diamond or triangular ways. And then the fact that we paired it with a pant, like I'm okay with that. It's a little bit different than the usual runway sort of styles, but I think it looks nice and intriguing. And then we have our usual silk, copper, beige sort of style. It's a little bit reflective. We have that beautiful plunging vest underneath with a big black bow tie. The pants fit decently and the shoes I wouldn't have chosen, but okay. Overall, I think they're fine. It's nice Gucci looks, not opposed. They're not like too dressed down and weird. They're not like too crazy over the top avant-garde either. Next up, we have Marion Cotillard and she is wearing Chanel. Like a trellis embroidered cocktail dress that's strapless and like a light pink with silver embroidery. And that, that shoe looks like she's wearing goddamn Converse. That's bad, you know that, that's fine, we're good. Thank you, Chanel. I don't know what we're doing. We're doing something, unfortunately. Next up, we have Mathilde Pinot, and she is wearing a Saint Laurent. Now, Mathilde Pinot, if you don't know, is the daughter of Francois Pinot, who is the owner of Caring, which owns, you know, Gucci and Saint Laurent and Balenciaga and Bottega Veneta and Alexander McQueen. And so my thing about this is, if you're gonna be like the daughter, billionaire, luxury, fashion conglomerate. This is how you do it. 
You know what I mean? Like, do fashion. Be fashionable. Be chic. Be elegant. But at the same time, be interesting. You know what I mean? Like, it should be in your blood. Should be something that you just nail over and over and over again because you have access to just about everything and anything i would presume what we have here is a black i believe velvet dress that is turtlenecks but down the sides that run along both you know the neck down to the sleeve and also from like the armpit sort of down as well are these little buckle straps it's cool it's intriguing it's interesting it looks nice a little bit sexy a little bit salacious but it works I think it's very sweet. I'd love to see it. I will be keeping my eyes open for Mathilde Pinot. From now on, I'd like to see the delivery continue, please. Billionaire children of luxury conglomerate owners. This is how you fashion. Just putting it out there. Next up, we have Miles Teller. He's wearing Celine off-white creamy suit. It fits decently enough. I'm not really mad about it. I'm not really interested by it though either. It's Celine, so it's gonna be rather simple. It's there. Would I like something a little bit more intriguing? Yes, absolutely. Should I maybe expect that? No, I don't think so. Next up we have Naomi Campbell. She's wearing Valentino. Now this is from the Spring 2022 Haute Couture Collection. It is a black, very thin strap dress. So it essentially looks like she's wearing overalls with a skirt, but it's covered in big, beautiful feathers. Honestly, I appreciate that Naomi wore it. I think this image is maybe a little bit intriguing because it, it looks more overall-ish than it does from the front. But I appreciate that Naomi does it in a Valentino. I think the feathers are very sort of signature Pier Paolo Pacilli for Valentino as well. I think that it fits her nicely. I'm not mad, I'm not mad. I'm not like, oh my God, wow, I'm dying, but I'm not mad. Next up, we have Nikki Tutorials. She's wearing Ronald van der Kemp. Now this is Haute Couture, I believe, but I couldn't find it in a collection. So I'm not really sure what collection it's from. It's pretty much like a 1980s big shoulder sort of style, which is very Ronald van der Kemp to a degree when it's not like super duper avant-garde, but it's like a bias cut. So it sort of asymmetrically comes down and then drapes around. I'm not sure if Nikki like bought this. I'm not sure if Nikki borrowed this. And then we also paired it with a little Bottega sandal. I feel like we could have changed the shoe up definitely because I don't really think it's super coherent to do a Bottega sandal with a Ronald Vanderkamp like 1980s kind of vibe. I want better for Nikki as in I want her to style herself better or get a stylist that will style her better because it's just not great, not intriguing, not memorable. The fit isn't bad. It's also not great though. And the shoe, that's a, I finished my can red carpet walk and now I'm gonna go to the beach and hang out and drink margaritas or I don't know whatever French people drink, I can. That's where you wear that shoe, not on the red carpet and not with that dress either. So that's my, that's my Nikki tutorials issue. Next up we have Rebecca Hall and she is wearing Gucci. I love this dress, I think it's a great dress. I think the beauty of this pink and the red works really, really well together. The gathering that sort of takes center place at this little sheer keyhole panel is gorgeous and the fact that it radiates out these like beautiful little crystals and then we can see that obviously like there is a sort of halter style it's not actually halter in terms of dress but the way that the pink moves it's like around the neck and then it comes down sort of encompasses the bodice and the waist and then sort of juts down and then lets the red sort of do the rest of the work in the sleeves and on the hips and then for a lot of the train it's very obviously like a lace dress too so the pink lace is really gorgeous and lovely and then i just think that honestly the feathers work i think the crystals work it's that gucci too too much but it's done really really well the way that the colors work together the way that the colors also sort of contour the body in a really gorgeous way and the way that honestly like it fits the way that the sleeves work the way that the feathers are like so much but at the same time like there's not any other elements of feathers so they just sort of are like beautiful little jingly feather bracelets honestly i actually think this is a lovely look Next up, we have Riz Ahmed, and he is wearing Saint It's not the craziest Riz look. Pretty simple. Double-breasted, black suit. The pants don't really fit super duper well, in my opinion, in a black patent leather shoe, but like Riz usually carries. He gives it to the girl, so I'm willing to give Riz the week off. Yeah, it's just your normal run-of-the-mill looking suit. I, you know, maybe there's something crazy going on in it. I'm not sure, but... It's fine, let him do like a, a little summer moment that's very simple and easy because I'm sure the next time it'll be like kooky crazy over the top and I'll love it, so. Next up we have Sabrina Carpenter and she is wearing Mano. Now this is honestly a sort of different style for Mano, I would say to a degree. It's a little bit more like pretty pretty, but the cutouts on the sides, 
magnificent. Maybe for like Sabrina Carpenter's publicist's sake, the dress should fit a little bit tighter. But like for me, I love the fact that we're getting like a little side booty outline. I think it's really intriguing. I think it's really different. It's very chic. I think it's very sexy. It feels very courage to me from like 1960s sort of vibes. You know what I mean? Like a little of courage over here. So when we get a big old cut out on the side like that, I'm into it. The bow I think is a nice way to sort of let that come in. It's easy, it's fine, and then it plays into the shoes. And then the rest of the dress sort of fans out really nice. It's literally like two panels of fabric coming together to create and showcase a lot of body and I'm happy to see it. Next up we have Tilda Swinton and she is wearing Alaya. Now this is pretty much like a mermaid style gown but in a button down fabric. And then there's like a cloak of a blazer so it's like reimagining the sort of top of a suit where you have a button down shirt and a black blazer and done in more of like a dress context which I think is really intriguing and different. I think the fit of it is interesting. I almost wish that it fit a little bit snugger at the thigh area because we can see it sort of bunches out which again is the fabric I understand that but at the same time something can be reworked by the Alaya team but in this case it's a little bit like mm. but I love the idea of turning a button down shirt into a mermaid gown and then I think the blazer cape sort of style works perfectly I think it makes sense I think it's cool I think it's intriguing again it's reworking these traditional tailored pieces into much more flowy styles and it feels very Tilda for me. It's very sort of simple in terms of fabrication, but very Tilda turning things on their head, avant-garde sort of vibes, which we appreciate always from Tilda. Next up, we have Vanessa Hudgens. She is wearing, I believe it's a custom Mimi look. It's a turtleneck style with a sheer sort of panel. And then we have these little crystals. They're big, they're large. Mutra Prada embroidery that is more modern and intriguing makes sense. And then we have a sort of sheer looking dress. It's like a beige sheer that has what looks like a gold jacardi looking embroidery over top. My only issue with the dress is honestly the white sheer panel that sort of covers above the breast and below the, the turtleneck. I wish we just embroidered a full shit ton of these crystals on top. I just think it would have been better. I think the white over top looks strange and weird, but the actual beige element with the gold embroidery I think is really cool. It's really different. It feels like it plays into, again, Mutra Prada embroidery. It's done sort of in a sheer-ish way. It's meant to imitate a sheer-ish sort of feeling. I think the use of the colors that are meant to sort of blend into the body just is not accurate. And that is what throws off like the fantasy of the dress. Like if those sheer panels were matched perfectly to the tone of her skin, I think we'd be having very, very different conversations. And Vanessa Hudgens would be like a best dresser. I'm just putting it out there, just saying. I think the look is intriguing. I just was the execution was a little bit different. It would have been much nicer and more intriguing. It would have been helpful. And finally, we have Yasult. She is wearing Scaparelli. It is a beautiful white coat, which love to see a coat. It has those beautiful sort of stitch circle S that are very very Daniel Roseberry at Scaparelli, which really also emanates from Jean-Paul Gaultier. So I'm into it. I think it's intriguing. I think it's cool. The black gloves with little gold fingernails. Great. We love the bag over top and the gold shell and gold brooch. And then we got the shoes, which are the beautiful little Scaparelli gold actual toes shoes. And so the black plays into the gloves. I wish we had done the bag maybe a little bit different. I love the bag in terms of the bag, but it had the bag been black, it would have been like, but I think the brown with the black, with the gold, with the white, it's a little bit out of place. That's really my only issue there. But love the idea of the look. Yassault ex Scaparelli would like to see more of it. So that is the end of our Cannes 2022 fashion roast and review. It's over. Let's discuss the best and the worst. In this version, I'm gonna give best to, oh, 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 oh. I'm giving it to Topeka Paripone in that Louis Vuitton, like a moment. Very hot, very cool. Rebecca Hall and Gucci, like a close second up. As for worst, Marianne Cotillard and the Chanel. You know why, there's no need to explain. We're good, we're moving on, we're gonna forget it. Thank you. This is the end of our Cannes 2022 Film Festival Fashion Roast and Review. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to watch part one, click the link in the description box below. It's there. Moving and grooving. I will see you guys on the next video and TTYL.